Hello and welcome to the IPS BERTS Video On Demand series for the Implementing Cisco Unified Wireless Mobility Service exam, or more commonly referred to as the IUWMS exam. My name is Jeff Rensink. I'll be instructor for this video series. A little history about me real quick. I'm a dual CCIE in both wireless and route switch. Been in the networking industry for about seven, eight years now. The last three of it primarily focusing on wireless both with a Cisco partner for a couple of years, and then more recently as the full-time instructor for IP expert. Let's talk a little bit about this exam at a high level before we dig into the technical topics of it. So the exam number that you want to pay attention to is 642747. This is the second revision of the exam, so it does have a new exam number. So as you're evaluating possibly study materials like books, things like that, uh, just make sure it's written for the 747 version of the exam and not an earlier revision of the exam. This is one of four exams required for the CCNP wireless certification. The other three exams being a site survey exam, a voice exam, and a security exam. According to the Cisco Learning Network, there is a 90 minute limit on the time for this test. And you can expect to see anywhere between 50 and 60 questions. Now that has been known to be wrong. So if you get sit down at your exam and you see that it's only 80 minutes or you see fewer or more questions, I guess don't be too surprised. Uh, this is a general guideline, uh, but this is what is advertised. The test can be taken from Pearson View. You can see them at view.com or pearsonview.com. Both of them get to you to the same spot. Currently the exam is $200 in the United States to take it. And this exam would be good towards your certification for three years. So let's just take a minute to, to talk about that real quick because I know there's a bit of confusion around how this all works. An individual exam uh, will count towards a specific certification or multiple different certifications for a period of time. For this case, it's three years. So if we have four exams that we have to pass, we really need to just make sure that we pass all four exams in the span of three years. So let's say that this is your first exam and you pass this exam on January 1st of 2014. This exam will be good towards your CCMP wireless certification for three years. So um, it'll be good through January 1st, 2017. So a three year span. That just means you need to pass those other three exams before this one expires. So as long as you pass your other three exams before January 1st, 2017, everything's just fine. Now, once you pass all four exams and you complete all of the, the requirements to get your certification, in this case, CCMP wireless, then the ex expiration dates of the individual exams no longer matter. Once you achieve a specific certification, that certification has a start date. Once you pass that final exam, then you have the certification. So let's say that you pass the final exam of your last test on January 1st of 2016. At that point, your certification period begins and your certification is good for three years. So regardless of any of the, the individual exams that contributed to it, if they expire, it doesn't really matter anymore. Once you have the certification, the certification is good for three years and then you just need to make sure that you renew that certification before the certification expiration of three years expires. So hopefully that clears it up if, if you had any uh, questions or doubts about that one. Let's talk a little bit about the types of questions you might see in the exam. These are all the possible questions that any exam could possibly offer, although not all of them will be available in the wireless exams. Uh, so let's just go over those real quick and I'll tell you which ones you can expect to see and which ones you really don't need to worry about. So on the left column here, you should see the two main question types that you'll see primarily in the exam, either multiple choice single answer or multiple choice multiple answer. Multiple choice single answer is, is pretty standard. They just expect you to, to choose one and then move on. With the multiple choice multiple answer, you'll have to choose two or more of the answers to complete the question. The good news is on these, they will always tell you how many of the answers you have to choose, which makes it way more easier as opposed to you trying to guess at how many uh, of the answers they're wanting you to select. So they will tell you how many of those to choose. Up above me, drag and drop. This is another possibility you'll see in the wireless exams. So there'll typically be a question at the top, as you might be able to see, a number of options on the left side, and they'll want you to drag it um, left to right and put them where they're most appropriate. Possibly you might see a fill in the blank. There you actually have to type in some sort of a value, whether a number or a word or something to that effect. Uh, I would 
not expect to see much of these, if any at all. These last types of questions really don't apply on the wireless exam. Um, the simulation simlet would be where you would actually click in and get onto, you know, for instance, like an iOS device, like a switch or a router, and they would expect you to either do some sort of configurations, typically, or at least uh, gather some information from the devices in order to, uh, to complete some things. Uh, we really don't have simulations for the wireless equipment, so you shouldn't really worry about that. Again, directly above me is a testlet. Now it's possible you might see a testlet. Um, so with this, there's a top section that gives you lots of information. And then there's a bottom section that has multiple questions to answer about the information that they've provided. So what you want to make sure you do on this is that um, you answer all the questions. Just make sure that you answer each of the individual questions. Don't just answer the first one and, and try to move on. They should warn you uh, if, if you try to do something like that. But just make sure that every question is answered um, and then move about your way. Talk a little bit about the high-level exam topics that you're going to see in this uh, exam. Now this is just the, the high-level topics. If you want to get to the individual topics, I'll show you where you can look at that. But at a high-level basis, we have implementing location-based services, which is location, you know, um, you know, trying to locate wireless clients or RFID tags. Design and deploy WLAN infrastructure for mobility. That's a lot of really good just basic controller configuration. Implementing the MSE architecture, so actually configuring and getting an MSE appliance to work, the, the server that actually provides the location and, and WIP services to our wireless networks. Implementing and managing indoor and outdoor mesh, so we'll talk about how to configure mesh and, and the details surrounding mesh. And finally, implementing advanced services and manage uh, Cisco WCS and Navigator, so the management platforms that we have to work with for the wireless network. We'll focus on that. And the detail list can be seen at the learning, Cisco Learning Network. And let me show you that just in case you're not familiar with it. So locations can be learningnetwork.cisco.com. We'll get you there. For our exam, what you want to look for is on the left side, we're going to expand professional level certifications. And all the way at the bottom, you'll see wireless. And this is the place that you'll land on when you click on wireless. So a lot of information, you'll see all the individual exams listed here. If you want to see the full list of what's covered in the exam, and I highly recommend that you have a copy of this that you can always be referencing. Click into the exam, what we want. We want the IUWMS exam. Here's some of that high-level information I already talked about with the 90 minutes, 50 to 60 questions. If you scroll down, you'll see a link for the actual exam topics. Now, you will need to be logged in with your Cisco.com account. If you don't have one, sign up for one. It's free. Uh, that way, you'll be able to click in there, get all the information about what's co covered in the exam at a, a very detailed level. Also, you may want to familiarize yourself with some of the other things that they have in here. They have uh, recommended reading lists. They have practice exams. And they have forums uh, that you can use. So if you have questions, uh, you can bounce that off of other people also studying for the same exam. Great location for you to, to spend a little bit of time familiarizing yourself with. So let's talk a little bit about study materials for this exam. We do have uh, a few different options for you. Obviously, we have this video series that I'm presenting to you. Some other options, though, uh, there is a book for this exam from Cisco Press. It is a quick reference guide. Uh, so the title is CCMP Wireless 642747, quick reference second edition, since this is um, uh, second edition of the exam. Costs about $20. Highly, highly recommend that you pick this up. It is a great book written by Jerome Henry, really sharp guy. Used to be an instructor in the wireless world, now works directly for Cisco, at least at the time of this recording. So uh, very highly recommend that you Purchase this and read this as a companion to the videos. Some of the information that I reference in the videos are pulled from that. And some of the, the information, it'll actually dig a little bit deeper into a few of the details that I might not get as deep into in this series. So definitely pick it up. It's well worth the $20. There really aren't any other good books for this, but lots of other good documents that we'll get to on this next page. Another thing that people really like with uh, the certification exams or practice uh, practice quizzes or exams. We do have uh, our own from IP Expert, so I recommend that you pick that up. Otherwise, on the Cisco Learning Network that I just showed you, if you go to the Practice tab, there are actually quite a few different practice exams uh, directly on Cisco. 
They're free. Now, I do believe that they were originally written for the first version of this exam, so it's possible some of the information in there might be a little stale. Uh, if there's been changes from the old exam to the new exam, you know, maybe they're focusing on things that they don't really focus on anymore, or they're missing a couple things that might be new in this exam. But it's free. It's from Cisco. Check it out if you got the time. Another word, if you are looking for resources besides ours or what's on Cisco's website, just be a little bit careful because you don't want to accidentally purchase the real uh, copies of the exam. Uh, if you've been around the certification world for very long, you've probably heard the word brain dump. Uh, this would be companies that just copy the actual exam and provide those to students for money. It's illegal. Uh, it breaks the agreement that you sign with Cisco, and if you get caught using them, you could possibly uh, have your certifications revoked and be banned from the program. So, not worth it. Do the work. Um, if, you, if you do want to check out some other uh, products, just be a little bit careful who you're buying through. If they actually advertise the real exam, stay away from it. Some other good documents. On Cisco.com, there's a plethora of documents freely available to you. It's not a book, uh, but very good information nonetheless. So some of the ones that might be good for this exam, the Enterprise Mobility 4.1 Design Guide has some good basic information. Um, the Wi-Fi Location-Based Services 4.1 Design Guide, also some very good information. Just be a little bit careful on these two exams. They were written back when the code was at 4.2. We're at newer code, which I'll talk about in just a second. So you might have to you know, understand what the differences might be between the code versions. The general information really applies across code, uh, but you see, might see some different screens. You know, it might look a little bit different than, than what I'm going to be showing you, and that's because the code's just a little bit older. Uh, but still very good core information in these. And then the last one, the Mobility Services Engine um, Context Aware Mobility Solution Deployment Guide. Just a lot of great information about deploying uh, services with the MSC. So another good document right there. The software that we're going to focus on in this exam really is uh, controllers, WCS, and the MSC. And they're all going to be using the parallel code version of each other, which is based off of the controller code 70116.0, or sometimes you might hear it referred to as 70MR1. So the corollary code version for WCS, 70172.0, and for the MSC, 70201.x. There's a few different flavors of that. So if you want to actually, if you actually have your own equipment that you're going to be uh, practicing on, uh, this is the code I would recommend using, since that's what the exam is mostly based off of. And finally, let's talk about some test preparation tips for you before we actually start digging into the technical topics here. Really, these CCMP exams, this is no, uh, no different. It's, it's mainly rote memorization. You know, you just need to learn facts uh, and information and then regurgitate that when it comes time to take the test. So, places to get these facts, you know, obviously through this video series and reading, whether it's the quick reference book or the cisco.com documents, that's the best place to gather that information. A lot of this stuff can really be practiced. So. Um, if you have your own equipment, or if, even if you don't have your own equipment, uh, IP Expert has racks at proctorlabs.com. You can rent some sessions and get on our gear, and it's all at these code levels as well, so uh, you can practice it out. And I find that really locks in um, the information you're, you're learning. Once you start doing it and watching it happen in front of your eyes, you know, sometimes it just clicks. Also, it just uh, reinforces what you're actually reading. Try to figure out what study materials you want to use and then get a hold of them. So do you want to you know, get that quick reference book? Do you want to get some Cisco.com documents, uh, you know, a quizzer or something like that? You know, just kind of figure out, all right, what do I need to assemble in terms of my training tools? And then schedule time to study on a regular basis. You know, probably the biggest trick uh, with any certification all the way from the NA to the IE is just diligent studying you know, on a repeated, regular basis. So if you can, you know, if you can study an hour a day, awesome. If you can only say 30 minutes a day, as long as it's, you know, fairly regular, that's really helpful because if you study, you know, I'll study six hours this weekend, and then I won't touch the stuff until the next weekend when I'll study six hours again, you start to lose a lot of it over the, the course of the week. So if you can do it a little bit more regularly, that's going to help. 
And then, you know, put it on the calendar. Schedule the time. Be intentional about scheduling it. Otherwise, life has a, a habit of getting in the way. So as long as you make it a priority, you can usually get those hours in. Uh, start with the written and video materials as your primary learning sources. You need to learn that information first. Once you've uh, read it or watched the video on it, then if you can, start doing it. You know, if it's something that you can actually practice. And then use quizzes and um, you know, test prep type stuff to actually see you know, how well am I doing, gauge your level of learning, and um, you know, should help you try to lock things in. You wouldn't really want to use quizzes as a primary learning method. You, know, you shouldn't be learning new things as you take a quiz. It should be either letting you know what you already do know and what you need to maybe go back and study a little bit more on. Some strategies when you're actually sitting down and taking the exam. Um, well, first, schedule the exam. Uh, that's step number one. A lot of people seem to put that off, you know, kind of call it perpetual preparation syndrome. They, they, people just feel that they're not quite ready for the exam, so they need to study some more. You know, at some point, you just got to pull the trigger and take that exam. You know, it really shouldn't take you a year to study for a, an NP level exam. Most of the times when I was taking an NP level exam, I'd be ready to take the exam with, within one to two months, you know, three at the maximum if I couldn't get my study time in. But that should honestly be plenty of time. So, you know, run through these videos once, maybe twice. Read the, the quick reference guide once or twice. You know, check out some of the Cisco.com documents, take some, some practice quizzes. After that, you know, just give it a shot. You know, the worst that happens is you, is you fail. You're out $200, but you know, if, if you go into this thinking, okay, well, I'll just assume it's going to take me two times to pass every single exam. If you pass on the first time, awesome. If you fail on the first time, it's not that big a deal. You expected it. Um, and then, honestly, if, if you fail, you're probably pretty close. And then once you fail, you should be able to bridge that gap pretty easily. Time management, you shouldn't really need to worry about this. I know on some of the route switch, uh, track exams that I've also taken. Uh, some people had a little bit more trouble with time, especially once you started getting into those simulation questions that, that seemed to slow people down, or the test lists where you had lots of questions inside one, you know, uh, logical question, you know, question in the exam. So here, it's really multiple choice is by far the most common thing you do, and the worst thing you really have to do is a drag and drop. So. Uh, you shouldn't really need to worry about time. You have over you know, 90 seconds per question. That's generally pretty, uh, pretty long. So as you get to each question, read the entire question carefully. Don't just skim it and you know, read the first half of the question and just assume what they're asking. Read the whole question you know, quickly but carefully so you don't you know, miss any words or phrases that are important. Look through all the different answers. Read them all in their entirety if you can. You know, again, try not to skip around too much. Once you've read enough to know that the, the answer is not right, you can, you can move on. But uh, if you can, keep reading all the way. Then just, just pick the best answer. You know, go with your gut if you're trying to decide between two things. Uh, use the process of elimination. So if there's four possible answers, you know two of them aren't right. So now you only have a 50-50 chance because you only have to guess off of two. All the normal, just multiple choice type question suggestions. Um, it honestly shouldn't be that bad for you. One suggestion I do have for you, just in case you do fail on the first time, something that's really helped me in terms of um, increasing the success of my second attempt. When you take down, take the test, they'll give you a little laminated sheet of paper and dry erase marker for you to take notes on or do calculations or whatever it's going to be. You honestly don't have to do much for this exam. So you'll have pretty much the whole thing to be able to take notes on. So what I would recommend, anytime you get to a question where either you just flat out don't know the answer or you feel that you're just trying to have having to guess and you, you got down to maybe two different answers but you weren't quite sure which one it was, just write down specifically what the topic was. So on this exam, you know, maybe it was something about, you know, adding an MSE to the WCS server, whatever it is. Not just MSE, but specifically adding the MSE to the to the WCS server, because you want to know specifically you know, what you're struggling on. And then if you have multiple instances of, of questions for that specific topic that you're having troubles with, just start putting little tick marks next to it so you know, you know about how many questions of those that you saw. So 
At the end of the exam, you'll have these notes about what you sort of struggled on. You'll get to the last answer, you kind of hit submit, hit next couple times, then it'll tell you you passed, you failed. If you failed, then what you want to do is review your list uh, one more time and try to memorize as many of those things as you can. So, you walk back, hand the stuff back to the, the proctor, head back out to your car or whatever it's going to be, write all that information down. So write down those specific topics so that you can actually study them. Because what you'll get if you fail, well if you pass or fail, but your score report is going to contain just those top level uh, topics, so those five different high level topics that we talked about, and what percent you got in each one. Uh, what I found is that if I just look at that, I'm just like, okay, so I was weak in this area. That area has a whole ton of stuff in it. I'm just like, oh, what do I need to study? And then I find myself just reviewing the same notes that I already reviewed. Probably not going to do me much good. But now I have a specific list of the individual topics that I need to dig deeper on. So I know exactly what I need to study on for the next lab or for the next uh, exam attempt. And ideally, if I start running into some similar questions or at least similar topics, I should be much more prepared to pass that. So I highly recommend doing that if you can. It should really increase the uh, success rate of your second attempt.